Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, now welcome back to our next uh, lecture. So this will be like, uh, so it is, it was earlier, it was lecture 28, and now it will be a lecture 29. So now I will, I will uh, describe you the first the linear advection equation. So the, the first example which I have shown that uh, del rho by del t plus a del rho by del x is equal to zero. So this is the first example I present. And then I, this is the advection equation. And the next we present del rho by del t plus a del rho by del x square is d del 2 rho by del x square. So this is the second one I'll present. So this scheme gives that ALA formulation of this part. And then this one is almost like this one. That's only the difference is that we have the viscous Borger equation is of the form of, so in the viscous Borger equation, we have del rho by del t plus rho, del 2 rho by del x square times, so del rho by del x is equal to epsilon del 2 rho by del x square. And for the the original Burger equation, del rho by del t plus rho del rho by del x is equal to zero. So I will show this first the linear advection equation, which is using this scheme. And then I will show the linear advection diffusion equation, which is similar to that one. Just the difference, that one solve this equation here. Just the difference is here is a, here is rho. So only the, the correction part will be different here. And also this is same as this. So only that here I have rho instead of a. So then I will have here rho by 2 at time level n. And then I will have rho n plus half instead of a by 2 in the correction step. So this is the only difference what we will see. Now first we start this uh, convection equation, advection linear equation. So same initial value which we have. So now I use the, the domain. So it is same example as before because I am not showing different example not to confuse you, but you can take uh, different uh, uh, the initial value and different domain that it is up to you once you do your self the programming you can play with different condition but the, the scheme is, is the same it doesn't change so i take my domain minus three to three i consider my initial grid point hundred because it may change so delta x is x max minus x min my n so again, the h is something like 3.1, 3.5 times delta x. So I define the final t is equal to 1. And I give again the factor for the weight function, alpha is 3. And now this a in the advection convection equation, I call it as a velo is 1. 
and I consider CFL number 0.5 is twice before now. Let us take this 1.0. So then I compute with this help of CFL condition uh, number my delta t. So here I initialize the discrete point. Once I have the discrete value, I can take the discrete form of the initial condition. So here it is 0 up to minus 3 to 0 and sine function from 0 to 1 small o wave and then 0 from that part. So I, I may consider also the linear case later we will show it and now here I am finished. So you see here so our scheme is the first is that initialization. So our initialization part is over. So still our we initialize our time t is equal to 0. So this dummy I don't know here it may not be required here. So I don't need to define. So now I start my time loop. So do while t less than t final or less equal to t final and then I run so now I compute first the the first step of uh, Runge Kutta method. So I go, I look the neighbor of old position here, and then I find the neighbor, and after finding the neighbor, I do again uh, the upwinding selection because uh, this is the hyperbolic equation. We need to do the upwinding whether you increase your time integration order, it doesn't help because uh, the space derivative is depending upon the upwinding information. So therefore I choose the upwinding whether it is explicit Euler or the second or Runga Kuta, it doesn't matter. You have to do always the upwinding selection of the neighbor or upwinding approximation of the space derivative. So here I compute the derivative here. So then I get my rho of x is S1 by so it is with the moving least square formula this is uh, in the first order, it is sum over w times dx times the difference between function value and its neighbor value divided by the weight. So then once I have that, so then I compute x half, exactly what I have written here. So I compute x half is equal to x old plus delta t by 2 times a by 2, 0 0.5 times velocity. So I compute my rho half according to this formula. So rho half is here on the left hand side, rho half is equal to rho old of i is rho n of i minus delta t by 2 times velocity a by 2 times rho old of derivative yeah so is a rho x which is i have computed from the rho old here so it is rho old uh, rho x is coming from here here then so once i have that so anyway i have moved the point so i am because in the in the left part in some part i may have the boundary moving therefore i am just taking x half of first point is the same as before and now i come to the second step which is exactly here. Now again, I run over all endpoints and particle, and I find it's a neighbor, so it is very expensive order of n square again. Remember, this is not the optimal way of searching the neighbor. So I have taken just naive way, so that if you want to get familiar with the code, and then you just do in the beginning with this, but later you can optimize the neighbor searching. And again, at the, this is neighbor at the half, you see, now in the x, half of every point and then I find the upwinding point here and then once I have the upwinding point I just compute our derivative at a rho half derivative of rho half and then I I get my rho x I x because we can give the same the value here replace the old rho x by now at rho half and then what we get now, the finally, our correction is x new. This is step here, x new is x old plus delta t times 
a by 2, 0 0.5 times the velocity. And our rho nu is the second part. Rho nu is rho old minus delta t times a by 2, 0 0.5 velocity times derivative of rho at time level n plus half. Yeah? So then I put on the boundary the old position, I say my new position. If here I have moved, then I just put it back. So this is just I am picking the boundary. So then after the movement again, same as in the explicit Euler, do the particle management here because I don't do the particle management here in intermediate because I have just moved with the delta t by 2. I have not moved much. And the delta t is again restricted by the CFL condition. It means that uh, I will not overtake the particle position. So therefore, I don't need to do any particle management after the intermediate step. So I do it only. I complete the correction step. And now, once I do all the computation, I assign the old value as a new value here. And then I increase my time t to t plus delta t. And then we go, we continue the loop until we reach the t final. So now let us see the solution here. So what we have here is that this is so again. So I told you that increasing the accuracy in the time, it doesn't help you to improve your accuracy because you have to do the accuracy in the space, not only in the time. Maybe the time, maybe with the stability, not with the, the accuracy or what it, of course, then you have to do, if you want to do the second order accuracy, then you have to do also the in space, the derivative you have to compute with the second order, but here now we have computed only with the first order. So this is here I have just plotted because we know the, in this case we know the exact solution. So here I have just taken the absolute value between exact and numerical solution. Now let us increase my, I have just, my n is equal to 100, let us increase like 400. So I should get the error smaller. So here maximum error is 0 0.25. And then uh, we should also match is very close. So let us take the 400 here. So if, if I plug, I think, so now I have defined. So let's, let us try. So now, so my error has decreased, so it was 0 0.25 before. The maximum error now it is still, yeah, it's like 0 0.15, less than that. So I am close. So the, still this is not sufficient. So we may have to go further because I have taken large domain minus 300, minus 3 to 3. So let us take now once more 800. Then we may be able to see the error smaller and then the solution of exact and numerical solution is uh, very close. So now the error is again, it is not going that much. It is maximum error 0 0.12, 0 0.1. So you look uh, like uh, you see that uh, it is the first order upwind scheme. Therefore, in the, the corner, you have little bit diffusion here. The red is a numerical solution, blue is uh, the exact solution. Somehow in the between, in the middle, we have the smaller error, but the larger error is nothing. It is on the, in this corner, yeah? So if I, I put the velocity in the other direction, so because since we have the, the upwinding depending upon the velocity sign, so now if I run the velocity to other direction, then I, so the, the way move from the right to left, yeah? Uh, somewhere here it is plotting the exact solution. So there is some error. I don't know. The error is just said it is not matching with the. So if let us take with 100, it should be fine. 
because I don't have to change uh, plotting the exact solution. There must be something wrong. But anyway, so that is a very technical problem. So if we have our positive velocity, we just have to just solve this technical problem. Yeah. So we have the difference, uh, the plotting of exact and numerical solution. Now we go for. So what will happen when I do? I go for the advection diffusion equation. So linear advection diffusion equation here. Everything is same. So here I have just a minus 0 0.1 or uh, the diffusion is uh, taken as 0 0.002. So only the difference is what you see is that in the first step, now we compute the derivative of second order derivative. Therefore, we have to invert this 2 by 2 matrix here in order to get the second order derivative rho xxi. So then what I have there now, our half is same as before, but rho half is nothing. It is a delta t by 2 times the diffusion times the second order derivative at all time step. Now you come to the second step is exactly the same. We have at x half. And then again, we invert the 2 by 2 matrix in order to get the second order derivative of the rho half here at time, time is the x of half. And now we update our x nu is the same as before. And the but our rho nu is so dt times diffusion times rho xx at time level n plus half. Yeah? So that is the advection diffusion equation. Other part are same, so it doesn't change. Now let us plug. Yeah, so it is better. You see, if you solve the advection diffusion equation, it is better. Why it is better? I have taken the second order approximation of the derivative. Yeah, so I have taken the epsilon very small. Now, if I play with the different epsilon, because if epsilon tends to zero, yeah, or at the D, if the diffusion tends to zero or is equal to zero, we have the original advection uh, the equation. So it means in the original advection equation, we get exact solution. Yeah. Now the epsilon, if I increase, then of course we are away. But with this first order upwinding scheme, what we have done that we have taken the two times the first order derivative. So we have made a mistake, some error here. We have made a mistake, the error again in the rho x i plus half position, then there is the, the error by two times. So it is maybe worse than the first order explicit Euler, because there we have computed the derivative at one time, one in one time step, but here we have computed derivative on this space two times, first order, and then we have even double diffusion. Yeah, that was the reason why we have got little bit, even the increasing the time step was not helping much because we are getting very diffuse solution. Yeah, So that was that we have accumulated error twice. Therefore, if we look the linear advection equation with the, the Euler scheme, linear advection ALF is Euler. So now you see this is our Maybe the error is even smaller because of the derivative only one time. Yeah, let us check. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So derivative is almost same. Yeah, so it has not worsened. Even we have done the space derivative two times, but due to the time step, somehow the second order time, so we have not lost much. Yeah, so now we are in the linear diffusion equation here. So now I play with different epsilon. Now remember the epsilon or diffusion, the coefficient was 0 0.001. So now again run it 0 0.001 with 100 points. We are very close to the exact solution. So now I increase by factor 10. So what do we get? So we get a little bit smaller. So if I, I take Again, larger again by factor 
pain larger than this, then we are maybe almost close to our linear advection equation. Let us put the positive sign of velocity here, run over there. Is more more diffuse? Maybe it is. So you have to play. I don't know exactly which diffusion is matching. If we take maybe zero point zero five, then maybe we are close to the. Then it is. It will be close to the uh, opening scheme here. Now, so you just just keep in mind. We have this much deviation. So it is similar to if I have my the diffusion coefficient 0 0.01, so the upwinding first order is similar to that one. Now let us come to so what will happen now? So I told that so we have increased our delta t, and now we have the the time integration second order, and in the diffusion case we have the the derivative of second order. Due to the diffusion, we are able to stabilize our instability in the solution. But now I do in that first part, I compute that the first order derivative order two. What will happen? I have the second order in the time. I had first order in the space. Now I am going to approximate this del rho by del x with the second order. It means I compute extra 2 by 2 matrix, invert 2 by 2 matrix, because we know that if you approximate second order, then you get better resolution. Yeah? Your solution of second order approximation in the derivative was much better. But when you plug into our scheme, what will happen? So now you see the same, nothing changed. I have kept same initial condition, same time step. So only the difference is that, so I have computed, so I have inverted this two by two matrix here, and then I compute first order derivative and second order derivative, but I don't need the second order derivative in that part, so I just put the second order approximation of rho x here, as well as second order approximation here, so second order approximation of a the, the rho x here, and then other thing, have nothing changed. So I just add, I just increase the order of approximation from first to second in this part. Yeah. So now let us run the code. So it will blow up because increasing the order of accuracy doesn't help much. So in this case, there are the scheme, it is called somehow. It is oscillatory, it is a essence, yeah, essentially non oscillatory scheme or weighted essentially non oscillatory scheme called ENO or WENO. So, that if you look in the finite uh, different literature, you can find that. Maybe in the coming lecture, I will address how to, if we have the second order approximation, even in the space. Then in this case of hyperbolic equation, we have the instabilities, and then how to stabilize with the higher order. That maybe I will address in the in the coming lecture in our mesh free scenario. And now let us come to the end that we do the Burger equation. So just start with the original Burger equation here with the, the Runge Kuta method here. So now let me Delete this part. Now we check with the Burger equation. So, so here we get uh, so it is open Runge Kuta. It is almost same as uh, the explicit Euler because the increasing the time accuracy it doesn't help us. And now, if I, I do the viscous Burger equation with the Runge Kuta method, so this one, 
this part here, yeah. So this is the viscous form of uh, Burger equation, and now the solution we check. So we are very close to the exact solution, but our epsilon is very small. Let us play with different epsilon. So what will happen now? If I have my epsilon 0 0.1, I get very smearing solution. You see, so it's too much viscosity. So if I decrease by factor 10, so I am very close to I'm, I'm close to the exact solution here. Decrease again by factor 10. So as we have seen in the beginning, it's better now. Now let us make even smaller. What will happen? Since this is a second order central difference scheme, due to that viscosity uh, here, we should have again the epsilon here, delta T times epsilon. Sorry here. This factor should be there always. We cannot forget that. So if I decrease now even by 10, maybe this is central difference that is very weak. We cannot have any more control. So what will happen there? Let us check. So it is still fine. So now we are almost exact. So maybe we check when it will blow up. I take even half of that. It doesn't blow up. Again, one fourth of 0 0.01. Sometimes it is after, after certain value of epsilon. So it's still not. We are very fine. Maybe 10, factor 10. So you see this viscosity is so influential that it doesn't allow. So now what will happen? If I put it, it is 10 to the power minus 5. Yeah. So if I put 10 to the power minus 6, so I think in some point it will blow up. Still fine. So it doesn't blow up. We are very happy. So let us put it zero then. Just put one more. Yeah. Then we try with the zero. So ten to the power. That also fine. Very good. Now I put it zero. If it doesn't blow up. Yeah, then there we get exact solution, you know. So epsilon tends to zero means we get exact solution. Why? The characteristics form of this is xi n plus one is xi of n plus delta t of rho i n. Rho i n plus one is rho i of n if it is zero, okay? So it means the, our new value is old value. Then this was the reason that why if the epsilon was tending to zero, we get the solution of, we get the exact solution. So if you increase your epsilon, and then of course we get uh, the smooth solution, but when the epsilon is zero, our rho new is equal to exactly rho old, thus it propagates with this uh, the velocity. So this is the, the case here. So now let us compare with this uh, some value, reasonable value 0 0.01 with the, the explicit Euler of the solution. It should be not comma. So this is with the runge kutta method. Now let us check with the, the explicit Euler. So the explicit Euler has uh, burger Euler here. 
So what is the viscosity? It should be also so here it should be zero point zero zero one burger upwinding. So what is our epsilon here? So this is the explicit Euler here with 0 0.01. When I take 0 0.001, so this was here. The epsilon was. Ah, it. I was looking this one. 0 0.01. So with the Euler, 0 0.01. So, so this is Runge Kuta. This one, just remember this, the difference between the exact and numerical solution. Now the viscous burger. So here again, the increasing of the, the accuracy doesn't help much. So I think we stop uh, this uh, Rungekuta method now. We go to a little bit different topics in the next lecture. So thank you very much.